Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Fulfilling Destiny podcast. And also, happy Veterans Day to all my veterans out there. Uh, thank you so much for serving your country, serving us, doing what is essentially one of the hardest professions out there. Not everyone can do it, but to those that did, did your time and you're now, you know, with your families or at home, thank you. Because my dad's a veteran right now. He's served 20, 22 years. It's good to have him back. It's good to spend time with my dad again and to yeah. literally celebrate all the accomplishments that he has done as an electrical engineer for the U.S. Navy. So go dad and mom. Oh, you guys and Navy brothers. mom was too. <laughs> my dad, my dad did 30 years in the Navy. Shout okay. out to my dad. Uh, thank, thank you. My dad did meeting tours. So I grew up sometimes without my dad. My dad mm -hmm. would be like in Korea. And then I just be like, hey, I'm in elementary school. My dad's not here. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you know, I know what that feels thank like. Thank you to the men, women, non-binary folk out there who mm -hmm. are in our country. I know some people may not agree, but, um, you know, he did it. That's how he could escape poverty. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's a, it's hey. a long career. It, it's physically, emotionally, and mentally draining for some out there, especially who are parents or brothers or sisters or everywhere in between, uh, there, are, there will be someone waiting for you back, especially if you're still active right now. Just know that there are people out there who are still supporting you and we can't wait to bring you back home or wherever you are in the world. So, but that's my soapbox for this bit. So thank you veterans again. And uh, get those discounts. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy your, no, I said, enjoy your discounts and enjoy your free meals too. A uh, number of establishments out there. I can't name drop because I'm not sponsored, but <laughs> oh, one day. You know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are uh, out there. So thank you again to those restaurants who are giving their time to serve some of our veterans out there. But it's now Wednesday. It, it's been a really long <laughs> week. I know we talked about, I know the, the guests who are here today, Elise Gary and Nicole Dice, who are with me again for second time, third time. And it's, woo -woo. <laughs> and it's last week I was just talking to these two and we were drained from the election. We were waiting for it, but now we have a projected winner. So uh, we offer congratulations to uh, President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Uh, I look forward to some really great things out there. And I really hope that some things for women's health out there could be changed. And that's actually the big part about this episode is about talking, it's about talking, geez. it's about how education needs to be revamped to fit the times for now. And as I mentioned before in previous episodes, there was a lot of gaps in, in, in my experience, my personal knowledge on how I was supposed to come in terms of puberty, adolescence, uh, sexual health, menstrual health, uh, since I was a child up until now. There's a lot of things I'm learning every week with these two. <laughs> so that's why we're going to spend a little over an hour to talk about because I know we have a lot to go through. And I see Nicole here, like, scratching her head. Like, okay, let me get ready. I'm, ready. I'm about to spill a lot of tea into we're this. We're about to drop some knowledge. We're about <laughs> to drop some knowledge today. <laughs> <laughs> so before we jump into it, uh, we're going to, we're going to start a little bit here in the beginning. So what I mentioned or alluded to in other episodes that where should have we started when, it's, when it comes to our, uh, our puberty? Like who should, like who should have we heard this from, from the first time? Uh, to my knowledge, at least in my memory, sorry, mom, I'm not, you know, teabagging right now. I didn't actually really learn all that much from my mother when it comes to learning about why my body was changing in certain ways when I was turning 11. It's like, why was my hips filling out? What are these uncomfortable? Oh, right. Let's go. Let's, let me rewind back. <laughs> let me rewind back just real quick. So because we're talking about sexual health, menstrual health, women's health in general, non-binary, and to those who, who choose to be women, cis or non-cis, uh, these topics may or may not be triggering for some. Just want to be clear. We are, these are mostly just introductions when it comes to sexual health. Introducing some things that we think 
could be changed and what we think could be adjusted for the future. And it's not a criticism, it's just some eye-opening things that we do need to discuss. So a lot of topics that could, co could come up that could be triggering or talks of sexual assault, abortion, reproductive justice, and all those, all those likes. Because those were some things in our personal experiences that weren't really touched upon in our education, but could be important further down the line for future, for future individuals out there who are going to go through puberty with support or no support. So that is something that we do need to kind of touch the line about. So if you're uncomfortable with this, I will put an appropriate timestamps for these once I figure out how to do it. And obviously in the description boxes below, I will also put some of the things that we do talk about that may or may not be triggering for those. Okay. All right. So thank you, at least for reminding me. <laughs> totally forgot about that. But anyways, back to, back to my introduction on, <laughs> back to my introduction of puberty. I did not know what these changes meant. All my mom would say is like, you're becoming a woman. But it's like, what does that mean? And I was explaining to Elise and Nicole a while ago, like how I found out about periods was kind of funny and kind of sad at the same time. Uh, I went to the bathroom with my mom because you want to keep an eye on me. And it's like, okay, we're going to go in the bathroom to get the, what's it, the back end of the female's bathroom with the mm -hmm. big, uh, the big stall, right? For the big stall, yeah. The big stall, you know, because you could change babies in there and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. so I did my business. I'm done. Wait for my mom. Next thing you know, I see uh blood and you know as a kid seeing blood usually means someone's gonna die because it's a lot mm -hmm. so i was like screaming into the bathroom on uh, my head i'm like you're dying and my mom was looking at me with the most annoyed look on her face like, i'm not dying it's like but what is that it's like it's blood so it's like but it's but 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 it was like i'm not dying rainy get it together <laughs> like okay okay <laughs> but she didn't explain that was the problem she didn't explain what that meant so i know for at least for the time that i realized she was still mentoring i was like on edge because it's like is she can die is she gonna die <laughs> it's like it's not it's not true but that was like when i was like seven so that was what second grade that's like second grade here in america mm. So yeah. I didn't get the formal puberty talk until I was in the fourth grade where they separated. At the time, we're going to use the, we're going to use the labels boys and girls at the mm -hmm. time. They separated all the biologically looking females to one room, biological boys in another room, and then we talk for about an hour. And then this is what one of the educators taught me. They're like, don't tell the boys that you learned this. Yeah, that was an issue because in the playground, it's kind of like a hushed secret, at least for the girls. Like, oh, you're not supposed to talk to, say, Tommy. It's like, I was like, oh, so Tommy, it's like, what did you learn? It's like, oh, we talked about our penises. <laughs> you know, just like, okay. It's like, what about you? What did you talk? It's like, we're not supposed to tell you, Tommy. It's like, but why? It's like, yeah, why? Why? Why couldn't we talk about this? Uh, if you normalize it in children, I believe it would be a little bit less awkward to talk about it now it's just I don't know it's education is weird and I know Elise you have a lot of facts to drop on what was missing or what <laughs> has been allowed to be taught in uh, our curriculums in schools you want to fill, fill me in on what so, how much has been missing <laughs> sure um I guess I'll like briefly go over so for me when I was taught sex ed I was taught in sixth grade um, which is elementary school, and then in ninth grade, um, in high school, um, in sixth grade, I went to a Christian private school, and oh. we were separated as well, um, and then when they brought everyone out, they brought the girls first, and then told the girls to put their head down, and now look at the boys, as the boys passed by, and then what? we were all separated, and I was like, I have no idea. Yeah, it was really what? weird. Um, so, I mean, but again, it's, it's, it's a Christian school. So, okay, okay, that's it was, uh, so yeah, um, you know, we, we learned about periods and whatnot. I don't know if they did, um, but I do educate my little brother, uh, to learn about periods because he needs mm -hmm. to know, um, because, like, I have PCOS, so, like, I want him to know, like, this is a thing. So, my brother knows, he knows now how to ask properly instead of, like, how most, um, 
most males or some females will assume like, oh, you're having a bad day, so you must be on your period. Like, no, Mm -hmm. it's not that. It's different. And so he knows how to properly ask and talk about it. How does he ask? I'm curious. I'm curious. No, sure, sure, sure. How does he ask? So so my brother, so the way we'll go through it, he's like, hey, are you having a bad day? Yes. What's going on with your day? Da, 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 da. Oh, okay. So he's not jumping straight. Yeah, it's not, it's not you're being weird are you on your period or like oh you're like you were happy one day now you're like happy this minute now you're not so you're on your period it's not that and so I I appreciate that those knowledge darts were thrown at my brother by me uh I hope no, that's, do that with there. that's perfect so um, as far so, as uh no yeah, yeah yeah go ahead keep going yeah 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 um so see so yeah, my mom when she taught me I know it's a super awkward conversation um but we have kaiser here in california Mm -hmm. and they gave me this pamphlet that was had pink writing on the top and black and white and everything else and then it says from a girl to a woman i'm pretty sure i still have it in my closet and it's just and so she sat me down and she was doing my hair and she was like i want you to read this and then she was just doing my hair and i was reading it and i'm like what is this uh so that was great um yeah and then when I found out so like I had that talk and then like like if I knew what periods were but still had like no real idea because like thank you Kaiser it's in black and white so what am I supposed to know um and <laughs> but so then when I got my period in the sixth grade I had like these little like dots on my underwear one day and I was like mom what is this and my mom and my grandmother were over, and she was like, oh, my God, my baby's a woman. And I was like, I don't know oh. what this means. <laughs> she's like, she's like, you put this, she gave me a panty liner, and she's like, you put this on your underwear, and there you go, and it will protect you. So as a kid, like, I was like, I need direct instruction, because I literally just put the panty liner on top of my underwear and then left. And I would like go to play kickball and I was like, why is this thing like like going up my butt? Like why why is it escaping my underwear? Like I keep looking like I keep digging in my butt. Like what's going on? And so I came home and told my mom, she's like, There's a sticker. I was like, There's a sticker? And so <laughs> rip off the rip off the back part and then six long because there's an adhesive. I didn't know. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I still joke about that today, but yeah, that that was my experience. But now I know. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, fun times. What about uh, you, just... Nicole? <laughs> uh, my yeah, it was a lot different for me, um, <laughs> but still also very unknown. My mother had a hysterectomy at an early age, so I didn't mm-hmm. grow up with seeing somebody uh, my mom dealing with that I would hear I yeah I, I didn't even like she didn't even have maxi pads or tampons where like some girls you know how you kind of um well I, I guess I was lucky enough that we had a kid's bathroom and my parents had their own bathroom so um mm-hmm. when you would snoop and try to look for the goods <laughs> aka I just wanted to like put makeup on I've always as you can tell I'm really into makeup by my fresh face of COVID <laughs> Um, Lovely. <laughs> I've just always been into makeup so I remember going to other people's houses or my grandmother watched me and I'm sure she already was through menopause so when I would go to other friends houses and they would be like here's my mom's maxi pads like a secret and I was like okay cool I, I had no idea and then I was uh, in Girl Scouts and we had a nurse come talk to our troop and we learned a little bit about that, um, which I was honestly kind of grateful for learning it at a, mm-hmm. such a young age, because I felt prepared when the time came. And um, they also gave a demo of maxi pads, so oh. that would have eliminated the sticker. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's just, I, I just feel because we don't know. And then also, I can't. I mean, you're scared. Hello, you're bleeding. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you're supposed to go play kickball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, 
it goes <clears throat> back to the if if when you learn at a young age this is just a part of life just like you have to get your tires changed you got to put gas yeah. in your car mm -hmm. if you just normalize it then if you when these things happen you can reach out to people for support and help. Mm -hmm. And then I got yeah. my second education in sixth grade. It was very, uh, where you had to get your permission slip signed and mm -hmm. the kids that didn't get it signed, they stayed in the classroom. I don't know what they did. My mom signed it, thank God, because you, you wanted to have your permission slip signed for status as well. You didn't want to be yeah. the kid. You don't need that parent. kid. Yeah. Exactly. And there were some of those kids. Thank God it was not me this time because sometimes I, I was that kid. But um, and it was just very <laughs> like uh, very scratch the surface. It was more just about your body's going to change. You're going to have your period. Mm -hmm. And that was that. And uh, so then my story is kind of similar to Elise's. One of my friends, she already had her period for two to three years. And at mm -hmm. that point, she was living the tampon life. And oh, so okay. she just gave me, and there's different types of tampons. I'm not sure if, if everyone's aware. Some have applicators and some don't have applicators. So she gave me an OB, which has no applicators. So I just said, okay. And I put that thing in, inside of me. And then the next time I needed a tampon, someone gave me an applicator one, and I did not know that that was an applicator. So I put everything inside because I didn't know any better. And then the fact that it's taboo to get inside my vagina, it, it eventually found its way. But I was never... I wish I would have learned more about feminine hygiene products mm -hmm. as well as my body changing because body in fight. order to fight my body changing, mm -hmm. I need to stop the bleeding. And I wish that there was more education on that aspect. So, I mean, two out of three of us had issues with our first time using, uh, <laughs> products because we weren't yeah. we knew our bodies were changing we knew that much mm -hmm. but we didn't know how what tools to use to to fight the change if you will or embrace the change mm -hmm. and um so I just thought that was how my interesting story was and then from there it was just how it was but you always what I hated was you always had to hide your period as a girl yeah. um if you went to the that. bathroom, the teacher would be, well, why you got to go to the bathroom? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, there was yeah. Code word. just know I need to go. Word. And and then if you bring your purse with you, oh, you don't need to bring your purse with you. Uh, yeah, I yeah, do. I do. Thank you. Because a, sadly, yeah. I don't have any products offered to me in the bathroom. So in order for me to go, I have to either bring my backpack stop at my locker I was I don't know if everyone's high schools had lockers or junior mm -hmm. highs so or you stop at your locker well you only get to be in the bathroom for five to ten minutes if not they send out a search party for you god forbid so there was those to me those were the, the toughest time is was more of high school and junior high where you're having to have to pretend you're not having your period but we all know everyone is yeah and that yeah. so um yeah, there's I, I, my story in a nutshell for y'all <laughs> oh i've got some especially like you said uh keeping it a secret which was kind of dumb um especially even my even my mom harped this into me uh like you said bringing your purses with you to um the school uh to the bathrooms for whatever reason uh some girls have started their period very young even as young as elementary school which is a thing um in my elementary school I've, i had a friend uh, she unfortunately had hers really, really, really early, and that's probably just her genetic makeup or, you know, what have you, so she was quite comfortable already having periods. She didn't tell me until, like, way later down the line, uh, so we had a male substitute teacher, and whenever my mom talked about periods, you know, later on, she's like, if you have a male teacher and you're on your period and you need to change, be discreet, but don't tell them that you're on your period. Just say, like, it's it's a personal thing that that's what she wanted me to say it's personal um but like you said uh 
some teacher's like, oh, why do you need to bring this to the bathroom? And my friend straight says, like, I'm on my period. Don't be insensitive. <laughs> and then yeah. she just walks <clears throat> out, and then everyone's like, what's a period? Mm-hmm. And then that's, <laughs> that's when, um, rightfully, so we never saw that substitute teacher ever again. But mm-hmm. then to the minority of the male teachers that I've had, they've, I like, which I'm sure they have children of their own. Some may be daughters. They, they are very indifferent about it now. But seeing the look on that teacher's face, oh, that's just a teacher, it just made me crack up. It's just like, you don't, you don't need to ask too many questions. It's just like, if they need to go, mm. you need to go. And we've heard horror stories of not just period help, but people uh, urinating or def- or. Or defecating themselves in the classroom because the teacher is asking too many questions. Like, why do you need to go? Mm-hmm. Do you need to be in there for that long? Can it wait? It's just like, no, if you need to go. You should have gone during recess. Mm-hmm. Or you should have gone during lunch. Well, I didn't have to go then. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to go then. To go. Yeah, I didn't have to go yeah. then. I didn't feel uncomfortable then. I didn't start menstruating up until in this current moment. And I'm not protected with maxi pads, mm-hmm. tampons, cups, whatever. It's just like. If it now, my, if my body says now, it's going to be now. And, you know, it's like, it's kind of cruel to have children or, you know, young teens, teenagers, even adults do that. It's like, no, 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 got to go before something more embarrassing could happen. And what I mean embarrassing is just like, we think of urinating and defecating. Um, it's like, because sometimes it happens. But, you know, with it comes to periods, people take it a little bit more serious it's more gro- or like air quote mm-hmm. gross the thing is like oh you're you're bleeding why did you get that cover i was like yeah i would have went but you wanted me to sit here mm-hmm. to learn algebra it's like yeah i gotta it's like i gotta get cleaned up now i can't leave mm-hmm. my seat because everyone will see i don't have a jacket to cover me or a backpack you know or a girlfriend to like walk like mm-hmm. walk protectively behind me on my way to the bathroom like tears of shame Mm-hmm. I've been shed from multiple girls in my classrooms, but you know, I feel like again, education needs to be better. And then um, the worst were exams because you can't leave, <laughs> and sometimes you because you 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 can't your your flow dictates your life. You don't dictate. You your ride flow. with it. You ride with it. So you could so change good. and get prepared before your your exam. All of a sudden, she's like, "Hey, guess what's coming out." We'll today. Like, you ready? You're stuck. <laughs> like I, I was in a math exam and I had to sit there and just be like, and you, cause we all know, we know when that's going on. And that was it. I just had to just like, so now not only is it affecting me during my exam and my test score and the fact if I'm going to pass this class or not now Um, I'm also stressing about is it going to leave it on the chair how am I going to get up (laughs) I got to turn in my scantron at the front of the class Class. I remember sitting I was done but I had to wait until the whole class Class finished and that's a luck exactly and then I had a backpack so I'm trying to move my backpack in different ways and then you try to like wipe up before you know just the things us girls women do and it's just like to me I don't know how I could have fixed that situation I was a grown woman this happened probably four or five years ago and I passed the math class thank Jesus because math and me are oil and water but we're called majors (laughs) yep yep (laughs) Give me a research to research, but math prompt. I like stats numbers. I like stats. I don't like yeah. a, like, I don't care what X is. Okay. I don't care what X is. Speaking and y. of stats. For reason. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, speaking of stats, uh, yeah, um, the stats that we have, yes. it's not that great. No, um, it's not. It's, it's not. Um, currently, as of 2020, thankfully, we're now up to 39 states but remember we have 50 states Mm -hmm. we have 39 states that teach about sex education and of those 39 28 of them will be sure to include Mm -hmm. sex education with hiv um so that's That's great it's a lot it's a it's a c c's get degrees and Mm -hmm. c teach about sex education that's oh, the no, we are in America. Scary. But also, <laughs> when they teach sex ed, 
it's sometimes not necessarily sex ed per se. It's more about abstinence. abstinence. So they're yeah. able to kind of find these loopholes. So they are teaching sex ed, but in actuality, they're not really educating. They're more yeah. throwing on views and beliefs mm -hmm. rather than facts. Mm -hmm. That is true. Uh, actually, another another fun fact. This is going to be a stats episode. Get ready. <laughs> no, it's, it's we should call it fun facts. Just fun facts. <laughs> fun, fun facts. Fun, fun facts, facts coming at you. Actually, since um, it is an education episode, I might as well put that as the funny title for today. Yeah, fun facts. I always right. love that. Fun fact for today. <laughs> um, go ahead, Elise. Yeah, go ahead. But, but like, as, as to Nicole's point, like that's totally true because there are twenty of the thirty nine states that do. Uh, teach about sex ed, 29 of those stress. Like there are states that will cover abstinence, but there's others that will stress mm -hmm. abstinence. And like there's a difference between like covering and stressing it. It's it's a very nice way. It, it, it's a way to get away from saying that we teach abstinence only. Like we're just going to stress that we're teaching about abstinence. And we're mm -hmm. going to stress that you don't do this. And it's kind of sad because you know, there are statistics out there and correlation doesn't mean causation. But as we know, for people who are young and who are human, you tell me no, I say yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the exact opposite. What is that called? Psychological resistance theory. Because I know I just my cop major. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> what that means is if you tell me not to touch this hot stove, I'm going to touch this hot stove and leave my hand on there. I don't care that you told me that it's going to burn me. I'm going to do it. And so, like, it, it's very, it's very difficult. And I understand that, you know, there, there's religion that comes into it. And, you know, that's cool. That's great. Because a lot of these states that do have these stress abstinence or abstinence only, whichever you want to say it, um, is in the Bible Belt, which is totally fine. A lot of my family is from that area. Totally cool. But... Yeah, it's, it's not it's not really beneficial. It's, mm -hmm. It may happen for some people and it may not. Mm -hmm. But we have seen more likely that they're going to have sex. And it's best to let them know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And especially it's really important to teach about consent. Because not all states who teach about sex are teaching about consent. Mm -hmm. uh if I believe correctly I'm just going through my stats list here um <laughs> <No worries. laughs> it's yeah it's only nine states nine include California nine yes it does include California mm -hmm. okay thank, thank you. god it's um, almost the edge of America that's progressive it's, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah, the middle not, we're concerned <laughs> we're, we're, we're 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 holding out hope but <laughs> only nine states teach about consent and there were bills that were proposed but um it passed and sorry did not pass it mm -hmm. failed in four states to add consent-based sex education mm -hmm. and i think that's really important and that's a whole other conversation that i don't want to get into because that can be very triggering for some mm -hmm. but it's very important to teach about consent you know mm -hmm. no matter if you're a male female non-binary it's very important to teach people that no means no and mm -hmm. yes means yes and a maybe means no mm -hmm. maybe does that mean yes maybe means no we need affirmative yes and mm -hmm. a consenting yes a sober yes that is what that means and so it's very sad that you know we're kind of dealing with this but it plays into a whole other snowball effect that uh mm -hmm. needs to have a conversation later and I'm going to move on from that because I feel like if I keep talking about it, I'm going to want to. No, no, yeah. no it's, it's quite fine. But when yeah. I'm looking at your, uh, your, your stats list too, since we could all see it, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> stressing about topics about abstinence is uh, one of the like aspects of sex education at its core in some states that do practice a little bit more religion than some. Uh, abstinence is a at least the way I was taught in in class and in my catechism classes, yes, I was I was Roman Catholic. Um, abstinence does help prevent a hundred percent of pregnancy. Like keep your yeah. like keep yourself from having sex. You won't get pregnant, STDs, or anything in between. That is 
that is true. That is a fact. You mm -hmm. don't, you don't, per, you don't have sex, then well, you know, nothing else happens. But, uh, like I said, just because it, you abstain from having sex doesn't mean that some people out there are curious to try something else, right? Exactly. So because of those things, uh, again, not a lot of information covers other ways uh, sex can be involved or mental health can be involved. So uh, the ideas of contraception or uh, having children would be removed from instruction. That was also pretty surprising to me. I keep forgetting that some parents need to sign permission slips to have their kids learn about their bodies. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, okay, we're having someone, a third party, teaching you about uh, puberty, adolescence, sex, menstruating, morning wood, and all those other really weird and uncomfortable things to talk about with your children and you're having someone else teach you and then later getting angry on how they're choosing the topic to teach about. And what I mean by that is that California, as, as, a, as a state, they've had ups and downs when it comes to uh, education about sexual health. And up and down is because for educators, they don't know what is the, pro the appropriate age, appropriate language to teach some, uh, some children out there. So I was taught in fourth grade but now when I was looking through my research, they're insisting on teaching kids in middle school and in high school. At least one lesson in middle school and one lesson in high school. They didn't say when or what grade level or how old you should be to learn this. But just like, why did I learn it at the age of like eight? And now we're pushing back these topics when some of our preteens and teenagers already having their periods then it's like who's gonna tell them if parents don't mm -hmm. tell them signing a permission slip is great to of course slowly like step into learning more complicated things about your adult health but at the same time uh i do i do agree that some language needs to be changed to fit to make sense so it's not so overwhelming and mm -hmm. crude or too explicit like this is a vagina what does it do we don't need to get in on all the specifics, but this is what you should be aware about if you start bleeding here. You're not dying. You are just menstruating. What does that mean? You'll learn about it in biology class in high school, but this is what you should know and what it could be done now if you're going to be menstruating in elementary school. Just put this on. Or just like a maxi pad or tampon or whatever. Put this on. You'll be okay. Kind of like a need-to-know basis. But again, like I said, not a lot of parents or lobbyists agree on how they should be teaching their kids. So thankfully, I like to say, thank you, AGE. That was the <laughs> name of the class that we had to take, AGE. I don't know what it means now. I tried to find it on Google, couldn't find it. So I'm just gonna <laughs> leave it at that. AGE helped me figure out some of those things, but it didn't give me everything up until I got into high school and I learned about biology, the human anatomy of, you know, feet or, Biologically, fem uh, biological females and biological men. But other than that, everyone gets a little shy and blushy when it comes to like, oh my God, look at that. Look at page 239 of our bio textbook. <laughs> it's like, ew, get over it. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what it is. Just, you know, when, when, when boys are like, oh, are you on your period now? It's like, is this, is this what females go through? Oh my God, that's so mm -hmm. funny. It's just like, dude, it's a lot more complicated than it sounds. Don't give me more grief about it because I already feel awkward talking about this with you. And I shouldn't yeah. have to be because you and I, we're going to be going through puberty together and we're going to have mishaps together. So the less you make it awkward, the less I feel awkward about because then it could just be more funny stories, actually. Like, I'll just make fun of your voice cracking every two seconds. Yeah. While, while oh. I <laughs> yeah, the voice oh, cracking. my head like that's what it sounds like so honestly <laughs> honestly it's better that way it's like you don't need to be too you don't need to be so strict about it you could still make it just as fun or as interesting as it is without needing to be too explicit but that's for our lawmakers to handle luckily i'm not in the public school system anymore to <laughs> scratch my head at the thoughts like why don't you teach more but you know some parents I mean, like even to that, Dan Marini, like when we're learning about biology, we're learning about biology so we know like what's going on with us like medically mm -hmm. and also like what's going on as we're changing. 
But like when that relates to sex education, only 17 states require that it be medically accurate. And what's that medically, medically accurate? accurate. What does that mean? You see, that's that's the thing. There is so I try to do like research on like what does it mean to be like medically accurate. And so the gist of what I got is, is like, here's a textbook of biology. This is what it is. So that's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. But Not when obvious. you <laughs> but when you think about that, like for some people, like if the scene of Mean Girls. When Coach Carr says, don't have sex, because if you have sex, you'll die. Don't have sex with your great chlamydia, and then you'll die. Just don't have sex. Condoms? Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's some condoms. That's basically what some people are having, and Mm -hmm. it's kind of scary. And, you know, if you're already kind of bashful about it, or if you're not getting this information, because 17 out of 50 is failing grade. Mm -hmm. If you wouldn't eat at a restaurant that has an F, why would we be okay with failing our children in understanding how their body works and how sex works? Yeah, if we're gonna bring if we're gonna bring TV shows into this uh, of how they failed our system, uh, we'll we'll take this is because I watch Glee a lot. I'm a Gleek. Don't judge me. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Uh, one of the pivotal moments of season one of Glee is dealing with teen pregnancy, mm-hmm. and one of like, if we're going to tie, like, how some teenagers or preteens are unaware of how the human body works, we'll take Quinn Fabray and Fid Hudson from Glee, the or- one of the original power couples of the show. Mm-hmm. Quinn gets pregnant from another guy that's not Finn. But the way she sold the lie uh, to Finn is that they got pregnant in a hot tub, and there was no, there was no actual act, no sexual act happening. But she surprised she's pregnant, like the Immaculate Conception. And Finn went along with it until he found out that he was not the father. And yes, that's sad and traumatizing at the same time. It's like, oh, I'm not the father. But at the same time, it's like how easy it is to feed wrong information to another person who's not educated. And mm-hmm. yes, yeah. it's a fictional character. It's a fictional relationship. But that's partly how some of the information gets fed to us, mm-hmm. especially if it's someone who seems to have more control or more control is probably a strong word who has more knowledge Quinn for Bray, in this case there's a woman she knows that she's pregnant she knows that she could kind of get away with it by lying about something else but that could be the mm-hmm. same way with our educators too it's just like when we say stressing abstinence that could be also a way that some of those lessons were taught to us it's like a small white lie or mm-hmm. even a big lie a big strong lie it's like if we're going to take Coach Carr, right, take his word, don't have sex, you will have sex and die. <laughs> or you'll have sex and die. Um, that's a very strong way to repel people from looking for more information in case they were curious. And I know now that teachers are educators now, like, they will always open their doors. Like, hey, if you want to talk more about it, my office is always open. Mm-hmm. But when you give a strong mm-hmm. message like that, do you want to go into the office to have a more serious talk personally i wouldn't think so it's like you just told me that i would die (laughs) if i was gonna pursue something that i'm just genuinely curious like oh what does this mean what does my period mean does this mean i'm gonna die it's like you have your period you'll die it's like uh no please (laughs) but But those kind of Oh, sorry. it just kind of like reminds like just to go back a couple minutes ago was uh when these parents sign permission slips or don't sign permission slips, I really feel like it needs to start at home. Mm-hmm. You open up that line of communication with either your, your own children, nieces and nephews. So that way they're coming to you. That way you're giving them the information that you want your children to have. Mm-hmm. But I always find it interesting because when you become in high school, the enemy is our parents usually. And we don't, we hide everything. Yeah from them and parents are struggling with different ways to connect with their teenage children and it starts by sharing this these taboo uh conversations with the with your kids at a young age where i i I have a feeling if if any of us three had children we would start this conversation where it's normalized where we're like oh guess what's gonna happen we'll celebrate it or whatever it's a it's just, you should, 
the, I feel like it just always, the thing that lacks in America is the home structure of having these tough conversations, regardless if it's sex, drugs, alcohol, all of that stuff, racism, um, LBGQ plus, all of that stuff. If you, if the, if kids don't feel comfortable to have these conversations at home, they're going to seek the answers elsewhere. Oh and yeah. Where the information, or that's where things can get fuzzy is where are you getting that information? Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you mm -hmm. just don't, and I'm not saying Wikipedia is bad. I'm not saying no, no, no. But um, <laughs> if you can't write it in a, in an academic paper, it doesn't exist in my eyes right now. So, <laughs> so uh, like you said, that's like you always said. my source, like, <laughs> that? okay, now that would not be okay. So, um, I yeah. just feel like it needs to be hit at home more and it with all the conversations because if you mm -hmm. feel comfortable if you have that aunt or that uncle that you turn to then you're and that aunt and uncle is honest with you regardless of what the topic is when times get tough let's say you do have that take that teen pregnancy you can reach out to that person or when you have your first period you can reach out to that person that you've we're mm -hmm. able to have that relationship with. And hopefully it is parents. Hopefully it is uh, in that same household where mm -hmm. the individual can feel safe regardless of how they identify and all these different aspects that these kids are facing nowadays. And luckily we're in California, which is a very liberal state, especially compared to the rest. So mm -hmm. I didn't realize how lucky I was being from San Diego, that like, oh, you didn't, you didn't have Hispanics in your class. Oh, you didn't have this. Oh, you didn't have. I, I was shocked. Like, you know, Not I, yeah, it was like, oh yeah, gay, gay men always hold hands. You know, that's just that's new to you. What? What? So yeah, that's yeah. that's a, that's a weird. It's a definitely a, a weird. Not only weird. It's a different conversation to have when someone noticed like from another state or another country, it's like what you have and what you don't have mm -hmm. like it's normal yeah, yeah it's like it's it's normal for us to see these especially changes now if we're gonna switch this into learning about lgbtq mm -hmm. um it was very normalized at least for me too i came from a very conservative household but then seeing representation even just like on the street to get coffee mm -hmm. see yep. uh see two males in a loving relationship holding hands being very domestic it's like oh it's new it's not mm -hmm strange really because it didn't feel too foreign it mm -hmm. didn't feel too foreign my first gay teacher he was actually gay um he was in my sixth grade he was sixth grade he had a son too and i don't know it was, it, it was funny because a lot of a lot of students my, my classmates we speculated we were like oh is is he is he gay <laughs> like it was like it became like a secret but then you know as you're older it's like oh we probably shouldn't have said it like that we were young mm -hmm. dumb kids but we we mm -hmm. knew that it was different it's not um the the air quote the norm at the time mm -hmm. most of the teachers were either married or single or if those that were married they already had kids so having yeah a having a white caucasian gay teacher who was married and had a son or adopted a son it was refreshing and since i mm -hmm. had that experience exposure so young especially when it came older that more people were like coming out being more expressive it was like oh so that's a new normal now but mm -hmm. then you know if i have a if i have a cousin or a friend coming from a different city they're like like this is weird and gross it's like no it's not mm -hmm. but they don't have the exposure that we have it's in my face it's day to day it's normal for me but i know it could be quite shocking for some others who may not entirely mm -hmm. agree and you know that's their that's their choice too but um that is something that i feel like we should also offer is like we don't want to make mm -hmm. culture shock is one thing but if we still choose not to look at the new changing times it's going to be very hard for people to be happy on both ends so yeah. at least i see in your in your stats for LGBTQ plus and in terms of their health and education, I only see that five out of 17 states, five out of 17, shouldn't it be five out of 50? Nope, nope, because there's out of the 50 states, only yeah. 17 was speaking about LGBT yeah. relationships or LGBT sex. Um, and of those five states, 
sorry, of those 17 states, five of them teach about it in a negative light. So mm-hmm. they talk down upon these yes. relationships. They, they don't like my community. No, they do not. <laughs> That's, well, we're not going to name drop. Your, I love your community. <laughs> we're, not gonna, thank you. <laughs> we're not going to name drop the states because that's not fair, but are you going to? I would love to. Okay, I, go. Uh, it's just for education. We're not bashing on these I feel states. Like, I feel like I want to play the game of like, can I guess the states? <laughs> uh, no, I won't. I won't, but it just feels like it would be. <laughs> No, a it's a bar game when we're back to going to bars. <laughs> well, just for just for this just for the sake of our our community members who may identify somewhere in the LGBTQ plus family, uh, what are the states that teach these topics negatively? Uh, just so we know, and maybe there are people out there who can lobby for these changes to happen. Sure. So our first state comes right home to Alabama. Our Second state comes to Florida. Our Florida. third one, huh. y- not surprising. Uh, our third one is Illinois, which really surprised me. Um, but it is what it is. And our fourth one is South Carolina. Mm-hmm. And then our last one, Texas. 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 Oh, wow. Yes. I feel like that could probably change now in the, in the coming couple of years. Uh, since more people are uh, more people are being proud about where they identify and that's a good thing uh, yeah. hopefully hopefully more especially our younger generation who are more comfortable in their own skin um, could hopefully change some of the ways that these topics are discussed about LGBTQ plus because we don't need more no that's quite fine uh, we don't need to. <laughs> we don't need to be negative about some of these things because, like I said, some of the education gaps that we've had is that we don't know how to communicate with others who are not like us. Like I've mentioned before, that I had a hard time at first uh, understanding pronouns. Mm-hmm. But you know, obviously, my sister crammed it into my head. Thank you, Jason A, for doing so. <laughs> <laughs> but some of those things are very important for some people. And yeah. being appropriate with it, too, is just, like, not everyone identifies as female or cisgender female. And not everyone mm-hmm. likes using she, her, hers, or herself. And they prefer using they. Or uh, the MX, the MX one, right? Mr., Mrs., and Mick. How do you pronounce mm-hmm. it? Mix? But, I'm uh, not sure how to say it, but I know what you're saying, correct. Right, right. Uh, that one. And I'm just like, okay, so that took more of an emotional toll and what I mean by emotional toll it took a lot to undo something that I've learned for so long mm-hmm. if I look at at least mm-hmm. now it's like to me it's like I know her voice sounds feminine to me my initial like girl but mm-hmm. she may yeah. not identify as that person or that or that like uh, pronoun. With pronoun. Those, with those pronouns yeah. with yeah. those pronouns she may not identify with those pronouns so it's like okay now I need to make sure when I check emails now mm-hmm. I see a lot of people uh, putting their pronouns. Also, it's just like, okay, thank gosh. Yeah, I, when yeah, I could I finally, too. it's like, thank God, because finally, when I do like my salutations, like, hello, Miss Mister mm-hmm. MX person mm-hmm. here. Thank you for mm-hmm. you know re- listening to my email. Here's what I mm-hmm. want to hear from you, type mm-hmm. of thing. So yeah, it definitely helps with the. And then just simply ask. I simply ask. I just awkward with asking. (laughs) No, because would would you be awkward if I I always go? This is how I always. Would you be awkward if I asked you what pronouns you prefer? You know what? They make it sound so easy. (laughs) But I mean, it's. But I feel like we overthink everything because, Mm -hmm. in a good way, it's good because you're mindful because you don't want to hurt someone's feelings. Rather than assuming, I always question. So. Yeah. But it's also how you question, because I get a lot of times like, what are you? I can tell you're something because I don't necessarily look white. I have like obviously mixed with something of a European darker olive skin. skin. But I hate it when people go, what are you? And I'm like, well, I'm a woman. And thank you. I'm amazing. Because when you ask in a negative way or assume, I don't like that. Or people will assume mm-hmm. I'm Mexican because I'm in San Diego. And then I'm a bad Mexican because I don't speak Spanish. And I'm like, well, I'm not Mexican. So I don't. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, I, I've always go ask because there's also with race, 
different different people like to be identified with different the terms of, of different races as well. So mm-hmm. as the simple as it is, just ask and more than yeah. happy to tell you. Yeah, mm-hmm. like when you I mean, it's easy it's easy when you're introducing yourself because mm-hmm. the first thing you can do is shake someone's hand if they're comfortable with that and just say, like for me, say, Hi, my name is Elise or Minnie and my pronouns are she her hers. Mm-hmm. Just by doing that, you're like, okay, I'm opening it up. I'm opening the mm-hmm. space. Mm-hmm. I want you to know that I see you and I validate you. Or mm-hmm. if someone didn't, um, if someone didn't, you're like, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't get your pronouns. I just want to respect your mm-hmm. pronouns. What do you go by? Mm-hmm. And I think saying it like that, it's really, really helpful because mm-hmm. I, I understand, like, even in California, we still get backlash for people who are like, well, I don't want to use people's pronouns. Like, mm-hmm. no, 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 you all definitely. we're doing Mm-hmm. We all we're doing is acknowledging and saying we see you, we respect you, and mm-hmm. we want you to feel comfortable. Exactly. And that's and that's all it is. And I I I hope that people know that. Um, by just doing simple things like on my Zoom, I have she her mm-hmm. on my Zoom. I want it to be as inclusive yeah, as possible. That's like if someone like yeah, like it's like if someone who's like for me, like I'm straight passing, and so like what that means is that past I look like a straight person even though I don't identify as a straight person. Mm-hmm. And I want to make it comfortable. Thank you for clarifying for that. I have never heard straight passing. So I was like, right. I'll yeah. have to Google. I'm going to have guess. to Google that. I have a, <laughs> ooh, instead of straight passing, I've heard the, the flip turn uh, for those who are in the bi community. Yes, I am bi. I'm just putting that uh-huh. out there. Uh, was it bi baiting, straight baiting, trans yeah, baiting? Yeah, yeah. Yes, all yes, those, yes. Yeah, all those yeah. things to things that we should have been taught against when we were younger. I didn't know about until college that there are mm-hmm. such a to use to, for our, for our friends in the LGBTQ plus family. It's uh, a lot of those misconceptions of how we are addressed, how we should be addressed. Like I said, yeah. she, her, hers. Uh, and then of course they, them, themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of those things that I, I believe that others out there should take note of because like you said it could be as simple as opening it up like hi my name is jan mm-hmm. marini. please call me jan you could call me marini these are my pronouns it should it should just be that easy but like i said i didn't yeah. learn about that until someone my sister <laughs> hammered that into me it's like stop using that i was like okay fine yeah all right you win you win because i can't i can't win against you but all right i hear you it's yeah I, I, I even I, snapped at her, sounds too. Sounds like an older sister. <laughs> no, because I, I snapped at her, too. She's like, give me some time to work work it in into my normal language day to day. Because you're asking a lot for me to change something that I've learned fundamentally for about 20 years. Mm-hmm. So if it takes me some yeah. time and, it, and I might mess up, which I could do quite a lot in these podcasts. <laughs> these are obviously there. So if someone wants to go, like, take a checklist of how many times I, I flubbed up a pronoun, how to pronounce... Uh, or how to acknowledge certain community groups, like, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's taking a lot for me to learn uh, how to address people appropriately. And there's not enough credit to those who are allies, right, or who, who are just great supporters of these communities, is that yeah. we are trying to learn. And mm-hmm. if we get shamed for it, it's, you're, you don't need to lose more supporters. Mm-hmm. Give yeah. us some time, because we're going to learn too and it's going to be awkward and uncomfortable but that's how i was going to learn anyway so just be patient with me Mm -hmm. especially especially now since a lot of things are changing with the past election of course is uh to everyone out there who's trying to learn some new things especially how we address people uh be patient be patient Mm -hmm. with ourselves Mm because we're not going to be perfect the first time and even while at least for me when i was trying to find out my identity it's I was not kind to myself either. Mm-hmm. Stressed too much about it. And yeah. I didn't have anyone to talk about it with at the time. I was mm-hmm. trying to figure it out and I was being too mean to those who don't understand me, mm-hmm. who don't understand the way that I wanted to be talked to. So that's just my soapbox for that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, it, that's a powerful story. Your story is a powerful one. And you truly, even though you felt alone, there were so many others that were going through all your different, uh, questionings of of your your true self mm-hmm. especially yeah. with the culture of I mean religion we put so much emphasis on <laughs> religion 
religion, uh, regardless of what it is, uh, but especially Catholics, they're no joke. I, I know this because I, when I heard, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, every Wednesday, um, I went to Catholic school. Oh, you're a Catholic school girl. Calm down. Calm it down. It was an elementary school stuff. So, but it's, uh, even just how we're trying to not say, I loved when, uh, at least I forgot what it was, but what did you say? And it had the word man in it. And it's just how we're, oh, mandate. Yes. Mandate, mandate. yes. yes. And I can't use the word mandate. Because I'm trying not to say, hi guys. How, hey guys. Oh, it's nice to see you guys. And we're I all try. women or identified um, as women so i'm really i I'm try so to be guilty really of that thankful. yes i but now i hear it and i want to tell somebody stop saying you guys i'm a woman there's a table full of women here but there am i supposed to go out and be the you guys police i don't I, and i don't want to do that but mm -hmm, i'm excited yeah. for when the world changes uh for history and her story and as we progress more and more, it's just, just the fact that I got a few years on you, on you both is like, I've seen the change happening. I've seen yeah. this progression happening and coming back from being in a very liberal state. San Diego is a pretty conservative city, but it's a, a conservative city in a liberal state, but we do have our first gay mayor. Hello. So I, I wish them good luck. Yeah, it's but you can see the change happening. It's the mm -hmm. sad thing is, is it's slow. It's slower mm -hmm. than a snail. It's slower than a tortoise. Hey, hey, tortoise in the hair. The slow one wins at some there point. We go. There, there we go. Yeah. There we go. So it's, and I always just kind of says it's like a, if you will, to bring in a bleeding term. It's bleeding from the out, out is and coming in. Like even watching the presidential race, it was like, States that should not ha be blue are blue. States are getting their first transgender leaders, their mm -hmm. sheriff's departments. Yes, yes. In more, Ohio, in Ohio. And more it's, representation. It's just, it's, yeah. just, it's just a slow mm -hmm. process. And I believe that with the youth, when I look at you two beautiful ladies, I, I see the change coming. I see the passion that you two have um, that want to have this change happen. And it just makes my heart happy because you can see it with the younger, even my, my nieces and nephew, they're like, oh yeah, our, our, that, that, that kid's parents have two dads, they're gay or whatever. And it's just if that happened when I was growing up, that would have been a very taboo conversation. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just 20 years ago, which is sad, but also, you know, it's, it's, it's happening. It's coming around. It's coming yeah. around. Yeah. So yeah. I'm staying yeah. helpful yeah. and hopeful. Um, and it sounds like you have a really good sister, Jan. <laughs> She's great. I mean, I really do. I really do owe a lot to whatever I've learned to my sister uh, because she, well, at least like between the two of us, I'm very introverted. I like to think she's a little bit more extroverted and she's willing to reach out and uh, quite literally throw herself in a lot of different organizations out there. I'm kind of picky and choosy on who I would tie myself down to in terms of like organization mm -hmm. and loyalty, uh, mm -hmm. but she does a lot. She she did soup kitchens. I believe she did something like Toys for Tots. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And obviously like food drives, obviously fulfilling destiny. Uh, she puts herself a lot out there, and she likes, when she wants to, especially when we're getting coffee or breakfast at the dining table, she likes to share what she has learned. It's like, oh, guess what I did today? And then it's like, hey, maybe you should, literally, this is how she pitched fulfilling. It's like, here, take my business card. Like, take a look at it. And I did take a look at it. I was like, oh, so that's a thing. But then I did admit it to her. She's like, I kind of put it on the back burner because at the time, it was kind of like shoved in my face. It was, mm -hmm. we're just gonna be completely honest but she did kind of shove it in my face at the time and at the time I was very overwhelmed with all the commitments I already had and I didn't want to add one more because then I really felt like I would be spreading myself too thin and then personally for me I want to feel emotionally invested in an organization that I care about because then it means yes. it's true to me and I'm not doing it just to get uh like the tally mark of being a pre-med student like oh, you mm -hmm. joined this thing just so you could say that you did it. It's like, no, mm -hmm. no, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do 
I'm going to pull my full weight into it. So that's why I joined Fulfilling Destiny about a year later after she introduced that to me. If anything, I supported her through all that. It's like, oh, it's like, do you want to donate some time to Fulfilling Destiny or come with me to the soup kitchen to, you know, help our, uh, help our community members who are experiencing homelessness? It's like, I can't today because I was working two jobs at the time. Mm-hmm. It's like, I can't today, but I will send my support through monetary donations because that's mm-hmm. as much as I could offer. But and then obviously teaching me about how to do pronouns, especially, yes, I am very guilty. I do you guys mm-hmm. quite a lot. I have a lot of friends who don't particularly care for pronouns only because we're very comfortable with each other. So they approach mm-hmm. her not to really get into the specifics about it. But I know in some circle of friends, they prefer proper pronouns with the proper group term, like you ladies, you men, my boys, you know, it's a thing, you guys, even though... Mm-hmm. Every now and then, it, it just comes out. It's just too, mm-hmm. too normal. Or my dudes versus my dudettes or my boo thing and not my boo mm-hmm. thing, stuff like that. My bays. Yeah. Uh, I know that for some who've had a difficult time identifying a certain way would not like those. Mm-hmm. And they want to make it clear because that's what they're holding on to. Their identity is what they're holding on to if they don't have anything else. Like, this mm-hmm. is... I am like we'll put in this case like i am a woman this is what i want don't push me in anywhere else if this is all i have this is what i want to cling on to Mm -hmm. and that could be a life we're going to put this lightly like a life or a death sentence for somebody who wants to be heard and wants Mm -hmm. to be represented so when you have especially with the election results we have some new senators who are like person of color who are queer right And having someone who uses those pronouns or those uh, representation titles, it's quite, it's, it's It's validating. It's validating. Mm -hmm. And seeing it, seeing it now, uh, now that I'm an adult and I don't necessarily need to hide anymore. It's like, wow, that's a real heartwarming feeling, especially like those who are advocating the most. Like I know Tyler Oakley uh, was a big advocate for those, especially those young LGBTQ groups to go out and vote. I owe a lot of my awakenings thanks to him. So I'm just going to put that as Tyler Oakley. Thank you for letting me be a little bit more comfortable in my skin. But uh, before we go too far, my LGBTQ soapbox. But that's essentially what I think is very important. Thank you, Jaisal, for quite literally saving my hide from making more professional flubs on the internet uh, with these pronouns. And also for inviting me to be a part of this new world that we're in together. So. Yeah. Uh, don't get too caught up grading your papers. You gotta gotta chill, lady. <laughs> she's she's super stressed with a lot of uh, school things, but I hope she does take the time to chill and listen to my voice because I will be serenading my voice for the next couple. Of months. <laughs> <laughs> before, uh, before we go back into it, uh, so uh, uh, among learning about new LGBTQ education that is important for us in the future, there's also some things that we don't know about let me look at this real quick um we're going to slip into this one just real quick because i think it's quite relevant hiv education Mm -hmm. Uh, we uh in my perspective i did not know too much about it except in college like this is what it does this is how it starts this is what the end product is and Mm -hmm. it's sad and you'll be stuck on pills for the rest of your life that's as much as i learned about it but nothing too much about the the stigmas and why it's a big problem especially for our uh lgbtq youths out there who are who are more who are doing risk like who are in risk like situations that could uh could make it more possible for them to get hiv so at least since you have more knowledge about that you want to fill me in well hang on one qu- i want to say something real quick it was, yeah. was kind of like mind-blowing to me Mm-hmm. How your education is HIV is that you'll take pills for the rest of your life. HIV to mm-hmm. me was a death sentence. All right. Because yes. you have a whole, literally you had 20 years more or less on us about that. So actually, before we go into at least, how Sorry, about you I explain that? Like, oh. I didn't, no, no, I didn't no. even realize that. Like, I, like that to me was an aha moment. Like just to show you how much progression and the fight for AIDS is I understand we're still in the fight, don't get me wrong, but we're starting to kind of see some little flickers of light because the fact that you're able to tell me your HIV education is 
you'll take pills for the rest of your life is mm -hmm. night and day of it's a death sentence. Yeah, yeah, explain explain that to me. Since, like you said, you are a little bit older than the yeah. people here. We're not. I'm not age shaming. No, I, just, yeah. girl, I earned these years. I wear them proud. Don't you worry. I would not be the woman I am today if I did not have 42 years. It, you know, no. Yeah. But it was uh, well. First of all, AIDS was unknown and it was scary. So there was mm -hmm. that. I was still young. I was still uh, a little girl. Days, right? But there was definitely we had the war yeah. on drugs and the war on AIDS good old Ronald Reagan, if you will. So to me, that was my education of politics in a sense as well, or my introduction to politics. Um, what were the, those were the two main topics in, in the 80s. So, and then eventually uh, I realized, well, when Magic Johnson got it, that was the first like celebrity mm -hmm. that kind of came out mm -hmm. about it. And it wasn't a gay celebrity or a closet gay celebrity. He's just um, so we knew he was a cheater. We did know that. Um, <laughs> shocking NBA basketball player, right? Mm. But uh, that's not here nor there. <laughs> no. I love sports, but it's not, it's not a lie. It's not a oh, lie. Yeah, yeah. Man, I mean, our poor real. girl, Chloe. <laughs> so then, Ooh. so it was just always like he was able to be, survive because he had money. He had, yeah. he had, he was able to go to Europe and all these other countries that were not FDA regulated here. Mm -hmm. um, I feel he kind of was able to change the stigma of it was a, a gay man's disease. Um, yeah. So that was to me the, uh, to honestly hearing it from Eugene was the first time I, I, it's, I am still like taking it in that. Mm -hmm. H HIVs is now just you take pills every day it mm -hmm. to it's, me that's groundbreaking mm -hmm. yeah. it's manageable now and I can imagine why it could be especially for our like our viewers out there who could be gay and are in a relationship that especially if they were in your age Nicole um, mm -hmm. that could be a reason why they could stay in the closet or reasons why they won't reach out to other men or allies out there who could understand their conditions and especially now that more people are being a little bit more honest about mm -hmm. it, especially even like if we're going to tie it again to uh, education health, that if you do have it, you should be open about it. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you're going to have partners who may need to know and they should know um, because it's something that can be passed. Mm -hmm. and, and it's something that we shouldn't shame either. Mm -hmm. it's, it's we, just, should, we should not yeah. be Donald Sterling when he came out and said, right. He's got those aids when he was talking about Magic Johnson. Like, no, mm -hmm. it's, it's, first of all, that's not what he had, but not, Donald Sterling was an old white man who was racist. Mm -hmm. So now he's dead, so no one cares. Yeah. Well, hey, HIV and AIDS is too, is. Yeah, yeah, back then it was <laughs> synonymous. And yeah. now we know, you know, it's it doesn't. Different. It's a progression. Mean the same thing. Yes, yes, yes. It's a progression. But if you're not, ed it goes back to the education. If you're not educated, mm -hmm. You, you like I did know HIV. If you have HIVs, most likely something else, you know, will get you in the long run. I did know that it's very livable disease now, but I, it really made me happy to hear that it's now taught, it's educated. Mm -hmm. So, which releases the stigma around it, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. like like anything else with STDs, it's a shared thing that you back to the consent. It's just kind of like. I feel like we it. need a permission slip nowadays. Okay, I have this, 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 and yes, we can do A, B, C, and D together. Okay, let me look at your fact sheet. Okay, cool, cool. We match. Let's let's go hang out, you know, and maybe in the future we'll have an app for that. I don't know. Maybe that could be my big app idea is your <laughs> trademark. <laughs> Whatever, yeah. Don't steal it's, it, anybody. <laughs> it's kind of like the same thing with finding that person that you want, you may want to spend the rest of your life with, or meeting somebody yeah. new. It's like, what do you share in common? What do you think mm -hmm. is relevant that you should know now before we hop into something a little bit more serious, right? It's like, oh, mm -hmm. I have crippling student debt. It's like, mm -hmm. that is something that we need to talk about. Yeah, like, credit like, score. Yeah, like financially, it's like, I would like to be secure. We're just going to put that out there, right? I don't want yeah. to have credit sharks on my, well, I can't swear here, uh, on my butt about it. You know, come future yeah. comes like, uh, do you have? Your boot 
And, mm, yeah, exactly. Or, you know, like some things to talk about. Like I, I'm in a relationship right now. Um, I have a boyfriend. And we have to talk about some of those things together. It was very weird and uncomfortable. I'm just going to put that out there. Sorry if you're listening. <laughs> I do love you. <laughs> but uh, honestly, we did have to talk about something. It's like, is there something that should be considering for us in the future? Like our health histories, not necessarily sexual history, but say our health mm-hmm. histories. Like mm-hmm. what do we have in our family that should be a little bit concerning? Like high blood pressure. Um, we have histories of cancer, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. arthritis. You know, yeah. some things are projected in the future. And he has some things that I think was relevant for me to know. And I know that I had some things that I think things that should be relevant to know. It's like, mm-hmm. we are all entitled to our secrets. But if we're going to be putting ourselves in a type of vulnerable space where we're going to be sharing a life with another person, some of those things do need to come out. And I know, mm-hmm. I know that HIV and AIDS have are probably one of the hardest things to talk about, especially when you're developing a relationship with somebody. And that could be literally because of the lack of education that we had back then, even in Nicole's like younger days in the eighties. Generation uh, gap. (laughs) The generation gap. It's like, now it's, you could be a little bit more comfortable upfront. Will people turn a face at the thought? Yeah, still, but you know, it's Mm -hmm. a lot, it's not as scary and you know, overwhelming yeah. as it was back and it's like oh no run away you have mm-hmm, like the yeah. plague you know you, yeah. you breathe yeah, on me that, i'm gonna catch really it is how it was you know talked about yeah um, at the time it was definitely um, yeah but now like to bottom for prep um not sponsoring them but they're definitely <laughs> an ad that i have seen a bunch of times and so like it's, it's something it's things like that where in like an ad where they try to help you feel like this is this is something that happens like even even a straight person who passed away from it is Easy E. Yeah, he was a rapper. Easy E passed away from from AIDS, and so you know it's really it's really hard when you have states like Oklahoma, mm, yeah, like I see that mandate um, that you teach. Sorry, mandate who require that you teach sure. about <laughs> HIV. Good catch. <laughs> good catch. I'm trying. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're required. Yeah, who require you to teach like HIV education, but they still stipulated as this is quote homosexual activity and they are responsible for the AIDS virus. End quote. Things like that is it's like we've come so far, but yeah, you're still blaming one back, community. You know? Yeah. yeah, and so it's like it's really good that you see these these like ads and stuff who really want you to understand that there are different communities whether you're straight whether mm-hmm. you're in a polyamorous relationship polyamorous meaning poly meaning many multiple partners mm-hmm. um you know just think of sister wife um and i see that show but that's a different topic for another time <laughs> You know, uh, Mitt Romney. Anyway. We should have a, a trash TV talk. How can we bring that into periods? <laughs> actually, there is quite. There actually is quite a lot. Um, this is just my insert for it. This is just my yeah. personal insert for it. Uh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Uh, big fat gypsy wedding. Oh, yes, I love that. My big fat gypsy wedding. Yeah. There were. There are some. Those underlying, dresses. <laughs> other than the dresses, there are some underlying topics, like like you said, like with Oklahoma, right? Mm-hmm. Where they take education word to mouth from their parents, right? Mm-hmm. This is just, uh, we're going to slip away from that just real quick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but to my knowledge of trashy TV, mm-hmm. uh, they are, they're, they're tied to the religion quite a lot. Um, most of them, yeah. I believe, are Roman Catholic or at least mm-hmm. Christian. And a lot of their education is usually from their mothers. Uh, the big, uh, what's the right word? Martria, Martria matriarch there it is the matriarch the whoever's in charge of the big family at the time that's how you learned uh about your periods and stuff and i i don't remember the episode but there was a talk that if you're on your period you have to isolate yourself away from your husband your kids and everybody else and they can't touch you they can't help you and that you have to like i said this is as far as my knowledge goes i don't entirely know if this means for this particular gypsy community or another, uh, and I know that the term gypsy is a little controversial for some out there, but we're just going to use it for the sake of the TV show because that's what it was called. Because that's the title of the TV show. That was so, the yeah. title of the TV show. Okay, I'm not, I'm not projecting yeah. anything. So, for, the for this we're going by the title. 
Yeah. Yep. So for for that uh, for that particular gypsy community, it's like you can't help them with their issues. Well, issues, and it's like it's mm-hmm. menstruating. It's like they're young kids, and they need to know what it is. It needs to be normalized. Most of them are homeschooled, so mm-hmm. they don't have. I guess, quote unquote, like the biological, like textbooks, like here is, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. And this is what it does. As far as, because it is a marriage for most of the episodes, um, the only thing that has been explicitly stated in those shows is that you had to be a virgin before you get married. For females, you had to be a virgin female in order to be married to have a proper gypsy wedding. Uh, Because if you weren't a virgin, you're unclean. And the prospects of you getting married again are very little mm-hmm. and especially if you're also a single mother prospects are very little the men or boys going to be men at the time the gypsy boys and men um they could be as air quote loose as much as they want it doesn't matter who they've had Spoil their wild oats. yeah with the gorgas <laughs> yeah like with their, <laughs> with their with their health right or whatever that they do um they have a little bit more flexibility and we're just going to use that word very very loosely of uh, mm-hmm. flexibility but yeah. the, like i said just highlighting just that community as far as like tv shows go th- those are some things that we could take a look at like some communities mm-hmm. choose yeah. not to educate appropriately about some of those things and i know that maybe perhaps that some of these community members have diseases or you know stds stis um that they don't want to air because of the stigma mm-hmm. and yeah. that could be that could also be true too i know that there's a lot more shows out there that are like documentaries are becoming a very popular thing now that they're starting to fall like in the life of someone who is paraplegic in the life of someone who is a poc or bi or a trans or an immigrant or foreigner you know all those things so i would hope uh if we're going to type out earlier that we talked about that how we learned some of the things that we never learned us through google mm-hmm. or netflix or hulu uh just name dropping companies but anyways uh those are something <laughs> that is very useful now especially for our younger uh our younger generation because i know mm-hmm. elise and i we were starting at the curb of internet and that we luckily had the privilege of growing up seeing those times change in front of us and especially for you yeah. nicole you probably only had books and tv <laughs> like uh abc ABC News. We had, we had this thing called Blockbuster that was like. <laughs> I love Blockbuster. Okay. It was before I Netflix. remember going on Fridays to pick out your, your two movies, mm-hmm. your Jiffy Popcorn, and yeah. your Red Vines. That mm-hmm. Red Vines are. Friday. I'll die by Red Vines. Mm-hmm. But like that. Like, you yeah. know, we. But ours was more, if you will, like playground chatter. So if we loved mm-hmm. the people, my friends that had older, older brothers and or older siblings. Well, my brother came and said, this is what a blowjob is, or so and so, like things like that. And I, we, and I was on God at that point because. <laughs> We didn't know. I'm not going to go ask my mom what that is. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. I didn't yeah. know supposed yeah. to say that live. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> was, yeah, sorry. Just, it was just a, <laughs> there. My bad. a different sexual acts. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so that was like, that was my education though, because we yeah. didn't, you couldn't like, we didn't have Google. We didn't even know what that meant. So, and you couldn't go to the library and find that stuff out. There was also the Cosmo magazine that would come out, like the sexual issue of Cosmo. And we would be like, what? Hot, hot. Like, it was oh, always yeah. just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was just so I mean, different. Yeah. So the internet is a blessing and, and a, a curse and, all yeah. wrapped up in yeah. one cute little bow. I don't know mm. if you two have done this, but you know, like when you get curious and then next thing you know, you go through like five hours of like mm-hmm. one thing that's mm-hmm. that's the only yeah slightly scary thing about youtube you could find yourself looking at things you probably don't want rabbit to hole mm-hmm. rabbit yeah. hole rabbit hole the internet yes. and um to to our, our our younger viewers out there all of our viewers uh do do mind caution when you are down the rabbit hole of some mm-hmm. interesting tags in the internet uh mm-hmm. but if you are i i still would stress like if yes you have internet as a thing, but also like if you want to become closer to your families out there, uh, consider also again 
do also reach out to people who you think have more knowledge than you. Mm -hmm. Something. Yeah. I learned quite a lot. It's, it's definitely going to be an uncomfortable conversation, mm -hmm. but it is a, it is a conversation that needs to be had. All you need is one person. All you need is yeah. one person to support mm -hmm. you. And that could just be yeah. enough, honestly speaking. Yeah. And I know also like today we, <laughs> I know today like we also really focus on like the very, you know, cisgendered, aspect we did get into like the lgbt aspect as well um but like we are able-bodied people and we don't talk about um you know what it's like for someone who is disabled um or right. differently able mm -hmm. um i know sometimes words are used interchangeably but we you know we don't we the lot of the conversation around that is not had and mm -hmm. like allowing them to be seen mm -hmm. out in public and letting in in our sex education so probably they feel beautiful as well. Oh, like, yeah, interesting Like, point. even in, even, because I know we talked, I know Glee talked about it very briefly. Uh, I can't remember <laughs> who it is. Um, Artie? I think it was Archie. Yes. Artie. Ar Artie was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And he, he was paralyzed from the waist down. And um, although in real life, he is, he was not paralyzed. But it was, it was a great representation. And he was able to, like let people see him and he had this he was like I don't know if I can use my areas because I'm the told I'm paralyzed and I can't and so like this when it does happen it's special for me it's something that you know gets mm -hmm. to happen and those conversations don't happen you know you're not gonna watch Gossip Girl you're not gonna watch Love <laughs> Island you're not gonna watch Night Day Fiance those conversations are not gonna be had and so you know those those things need to be brought into light too because there are people who are differently able and who still have needs and those needs mm -hmm. need to be talked about you know mm -hmm. just because people are different doesn't mean that they don't exist because just like the queer community just because we're different doesn't mean that we don't exist mm -hmm. and so I know it's going to take some time to bring that to light um, and I know by having these conversations, it's what helps so that way people can understand it. But I also want to just throw that in there because that's uh, I love it. Actually, I just wanted to ask a quick question. Did you finish Glee? Because there's a lot more to Artie's story. Did you? I did until they brought in the new cast. So, so sorry. I was uh, okay, an OG okay. Glee fan. And I was okay, like, okay. The OG Glee fan. Because there's actually some talks that we said that we wouldn't talk today that actually do revolve around Artie. But that's a different topic for another yeah. time. But as yeah. far as Artie goes, um, and this is, quote, what I believe Ryan Murphy said in his Twitter years ago, when we, the gayest show on television. As yeah. It's, honestly, I, I like to owe a lot to Glee for that type of awakening that I've had. Uh, but like you said, representation for able-bodied members out there. It was great to see especially someone like Artie, who is, uh, who was paralyzed from the waist down. Um, yeah. Fun fact, it doesn't, you know, life and reproductive health doesn't stop, especially even if you're paralyzed. Like, yeah, there are some options out there for people out there. Maybe it's not as air quote unquote normal for able people out there, but that's something to also talk about. And actually, that makes me very curious that now that you've mentioned it, I don't know if that also means the same also for periods like does it change flows and all that probably need to find somebody who is willing to share their story or if any of y'all know out there who wants to come with me to talk about their experiences knowing what it's like like uh, yeah not being able to move certain parts of your body a certain way or being having full range of motion does that change because i know if just loosely loosely my uh from what I know is that muscle mass shrinks because you're not using yeah. it a lot. Um, but then that could also mean some some parts – well, how am I supposed to put this lightly? <laughs> I'm trying to find a right way to word this, but not everything works the same way. And mm -hmm. it's it could be difficult to do some things like uh, peeing, like urinating, defecating. Yeah. And like some people have like colonoscopy bags – or a catheter forever um and a lot of those things have changed so that's also something that that needs to be discussed too because i know uh how we're taught as children again 
it's based on how we're talking. How do we look at people who are different than us? People yeah. who are suffering from uh, disabilities, physical disabilities, even learning disabilities, and all those other things. But those are other topics that we could talk about for another day. But uh, like we said, for women, for LGBTQ, for sex education, for children out there, there's a lot that needs to be reworked. Yes. I know we like scratch the surface and it's, there's it's, so much more that needs to be talked about. But intro. like, <laughs> yeah, but basically um, things need to change. Um, you know, of course it starts with, you know, learning in the home about what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, no but worries. also, um, but also, you know, I want to say this as, as properly as I can. Um, <laughs> just, just because, you know, you're learning about it at school, you know, doesn't mean that their whole life is going to change. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think that's really important um, because I know that there's that fear that with parents, it's like, if someone else teaches my child, then I'm losing power. Ah, uh, yes, that's a thing. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's like it's like, but once you have that established strong relationship with your child, you're going to be okay. Like, sorry, I gotta bring in a Bible story, but like, it's the only way I can like explain this. But like, basically, like there's a there's a story where it's like, if your house is built on a solid rock, it'll stand. If your house is built on sinking sand, it won't. So basically, like, if your relationship with your child is strong as a rock, it's not going to matter if someone tries to build it on, like, sinking sand or someone tries to build it on something mm-hmm. shaky. You'll have something strong that they'll hold on to, and they'll be more willing to open up and to talk to you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really, really important. Now, that's just me and my soapbox. Um, <laughs> to be but, fair, to be fair, yeah. not everybody has that same family, which is completely fair not everyone's going to have that strong rock that they could tie yeah. the family to but Definitely. always look for someone else who could be that rock to you it may not be in your own yeah. household uh it could be someone else who you feel is that rock your sibling your aunts and uncles even a teacher who you get close to and you mm-hmm. could confide into those are still just as important because at the end of the day if that's their number that they call it's like i'm having some trouble please help me Mm-hmm. that's yeah. already more it, it it means a lot more to anybody out there and especially for our communities out there who've struggled especially when it comes to family and you know if we're to get to the line sometimes religion does speak a lot for a lot of those things but, yeah yeah uh, i mean i'm not i'm not trying to get religious but no, like, no, 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 no. That's, like, no. that's just like the best example that i can think of no no, no it's fine <laughs> i grew up roman catholic like it's it's totally yeah it, it's fine. I think for if we're going to take like family values into it's like a big part of it is how religion was introduced. That's how we learned at first. And then when we start becoming independent and choosing what we decide what our faith should be, that's another thing. And of course, like shifting power, right, from who we choose to listen to from, oh, I want to listen to my parents forever. I'm a good you know, I'm a, I'm a good young child at six years old. My mom, my mom's word means law. Then he gets to school, yeah. like, she is so wrong in so many fundamental things. Oh my goodness. <laughs> then I questioned my mom, mom, why'd you tell me the yeah. earth was flat? Yeah. Why'd you tell me the earth was flat? She, to be fair, my mom legitimately thought the earth was flat. Okay. Well, there, the parents' white lies are no joke when you start to get educated or become educated yeah. and you're like, why do you have, I was trying to keep you safe. By yeah. lying? You just taught me how to white lie, pretty much. <laughs> and then they teach you not to lie. To be fair, right? To, to protect my mom's honor, it's not, like, in the way that we know about flat earthers. Okay, not in that way. She just doesn't, no, blissfully ignorant. We'll, we'll play it like that. Yes. So there my you go. Mom, there you I, go. I you, but thank God yeah. that you could see the light quite literally. <laughs> I taught you. I taught you otherwise, okay? Okay. <laughs> but other than that, other than that, it's not, like, some other conspiracies out there we'll say that lightly but uh <laughs> yeah so theories. If you, theories so as far as education goes i think it does should start at least at home before parents get too upset when it comes to teaching uh finding out that their child's education does not align with theirs it's like mm-hmm. you should teach that first and then let i would like to think let your children decide for themselves as they get older 
if they want to choose to keep to those lessons that you've taught or uh, through other people or through themselves when they fumble and bumble their way through life because we all do that um yeah but, yeah that's just my soapbox i love it <laughs> it's true it's very true we don't have children, but I know that some of our viewers out there, all of our FD podcast listeners out there have certain, not certain, have children mm-hmm. and they all have different parenting styles and they will do what's best fit for your child. We're in no way saying that you should do it this way yeah. <laughs> indefinitely forever. It's like, honestly, it's like, it's, it's your choice. It's your, you know, do what you think is best. If they need to know now or if they need to know later ultimately that's what you although i like to say i see value in at least opening it up early i know aya has talked about that she is quite open with her son about what is a period what are these products how do we help our women and sisters out there who are experiencing <laughs> homelessness like he's open to it which is yeah great. he's probably <laughs> seen more tampons and maxi pads than most little little boys <laughs> He's seen more exactly. than me. He's probably seen more than me than I'd like to admit. Yeah, I'm sure he's made some dignity bags too. You know, it's just he does. He spends every, or oh, I believe it's every weekend when they have a uh, when they do it a themselves party. at the yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah. So good, good for you, William. Good for you. Yeah. That's nice. We need more of that. Yes. He'll make some person very happy. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be so educated on uh, so so much different things. I mean, yeah. his dad's like a engineer of airplanes or aero engineer or some aerospace like, oh, engineering. Right. Okay. Yes, <laughs> I was like, oh, I've never because he's a professor. And I'm like, well, I'd never be in his class. That's him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's talk about <laughs> insecurities. That's what I like to get into. Yeah, that's what, what I say? go. What'd you I say? We're like, basically saying like, if we were in an aerospace <laughs> engineering class, it would go straight over our head. Like, nope, that's not, <laughs> I would not even try. <laughs> that's uh, all letters. That's <laughs> all, all letters and numbers yes. that we don't. When math <laughs> becomes letters, I'm very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the you. only that's the like, only reason why I brought it is because A sent me an email of a list of what some things that we should talk about in the future. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully, as we get closer to December, are some of the things that she has mentioned. So I don't know. So I'm just going to ask you, you two now, if you do know, so we can make a, another episode about this. Uh, period fibrosis education. Mm-hmm. Not entirely sure what that means quite yet. Um, I would like to think it's somewhere along the lines of endo- endometriosis. Yeah, hopefully I'm saying it right. Um, yeah. I think it's similar. Not entirely sure. Just don't quote me on it. Uh, different, different, but has, but has very, has had very similar traits. I have very similar traits. Okay. And then we have boys and men and periods and how we could educate both. I know we touch a little bit about a son, but I do think I could probably invite someone, maybe a guy, uh, mm-hmm. not a, guy, a cisgendered man or whoever identifies as a male um, to come in and sit with me to talk about that too and how they feel about it. Ooh, that um, would be an interesting one to listen to. I would love to I hear can't wait to spread the that. word on that. I, yeah. I will see if I can reach out that to somebody. That is very intriguing. I would even get uh, two different, like uh, at least two different men. Out there? Ooh, that'd be oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. If you do even know like someone. a gay man and a straight man would be interesting too because of the different education or lack of education Mm -hmm. they get for yeah it's uh, yeah third one is periods after birth because i know we mentioned it last time um periods Mm -hmm. after birth i do believe are a little bit different especially when you have your first child so uh Mm -hmm. if you know anyone who are mothers who would like to talk yeah that could also be you (laughs) (laughs) if you'd like to share uh your experiences out there what it's like to have your periods after birth up until when you get menopause whenever that is and then mm-hmm. last but not least uh last but not least uh menstrual products especially the cups because mm. while it is useful for more of the Very privileged folks out effective. there it's cost effective yeah. it's green but but it's not that it's not useful to those who are experiencing homelessness because it it's also the cleanliness exactly involved. that's access to water to clean to boil mm-hmm. i believe you could boil it to make it more comfortable i'm not you're supposed to boil it to disinfect it so oh, okay. the homeless population um they they would need most likely at least two 
so that as they're changing one, they can, uh, and then there's the different other. instructions. You can wipe them down with the, the feminine wipes mm -hmm. um, in a pinch, if you will. Um, it's just not. Uh, yeah, but like after, after your cycle, you're so, like you, you can wipe them. So you can wipe them in between time. So like, mm -hmm. you know, after you dump your cup, mm -hmm. you can wipe them with some tissue. It's silicone, so it falls right out. But mm -hmm. you can still wipe it with tissue, wipe it with a baby mm -hmm. wipe or with a sanitary napkin. Mm -hmm. um, but then once you're done you know, with your period, it is most ideal um, mm -hmm. to make sure you boil it um, mm -hmm. so, so that way it can go ahead and release any type of bacteria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason why she uh, sent me that too is because I know that at least for Fulfilling Destiny, we don't offer cups mm -hmm. to our sisters who are experiencing uh, housing insecurity in this case because like I said you could do I can say like the MacGyver way just being able to clean it quickly mm -hmm. with feminine wipes mm -hmm. or by dousing water on them but like I said there are still some lingering pathogens uh, mm -hmm. that may, can make it very unsanitary and I know that already it's hard to keep uh, keep dignity and to mm -hmm. also be clean during especially during the pandemic um, so that is something that we also should talk about in the future, since I do believe the two of you use cups. Uh, yeah. Swear by them. You swear by them. Yeah. So, I'm only three months in, so I'm still a newbie and I'm still trying oh, different yeah. brands to uh, find out to find right my perfect. Uh, for you. Yeah. It, 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 I didn't realize that the brand, I thought it would be, okay, one cup is for everyone. And Not now one that size fits all. Yes. And I started a, a deep dive act surprise. I go ahead and research menstrual cups. So I've got a few different brands now. And I was so when my friends come to me with problems, I'm like, that's the wrong brand. You need to get this brand because they have different shapes. <laughs> the thickness is different. Um, is, the yep, other problem yeah. <laughs> is, is people are treating them like tampons and they put it in too high. Well, now it's irritating because it's touching your uterus or your lining. So now it feels like crampy. Well, no, you got it into it's. There's a there. There is a sweet spot. Is the take? Uh, <laughs> that's it. Okay, <laughs> just making sure we don't we don't need to get onto it too much. Yes, um, that's until it, that's next. It. We'll leave until it our next that, episode. Yeah, but next podcast. Yes. Yes. <laughs> next podcast. But I do want the two of you to be honest, since the two of you have used it, and I've personally never used it when my sister first introduced it to me i'm just like what the heck is this? Mm -hmm. it's like why why am i sticking why are my fingers yeah, going inside yeah. we don't we don't no, do that because that's what you're she just showed it to me she uh she just shows me like this is what another okay to my knowledge at the time before like i said when she introduced me to fulfilling destiny and what are the options out there um for our women and sisters experiencing homelessness is that you got pads and tampons and mm -hmm. the next thing you know i see a uh, I cut. I'm like, it's squishy. <laughs> you know, I believe it was like new in the bag at, at the time. Mm -hmm. I was just like, what is this? And then she just very loose, like, oh, that goes up. It's like, mm -hmm. up, up, up where? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, up there. <laughs> it was like, oh. And yeah. she tells me, it's like, oh, you need to boil it too. I was like, mm -hmm. boil it. Is, is there a specific container for that? Because I, I was, at the time, I was thinking, like, food? Yeah. I was like, oh. Like, I'm not going to boil this in the same pot that I boil my oatmeal. Yeah. Like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> or my ramen. <laughs> but, yeah, like, yeah. like those things. Like, she didn't necessarily describe what it was to me. I had to do it my other way. I've only seen it under diva cups. Uh, mm -hmm. The other way that I was seen is diva cups. So, then when I did my dive on, I was like, uh. And I've heard it was uh, more environmentally friendly. And I was just... Mm -hmm. It's a whole new world. Like I just barely brushed on a lot of new things, especially when it comes to menstrual pods. And this is something else. It's like, when was this? Yes. And you never yes. run out. You never run out. Oh, like, you need this when, one? When the surprise happens, you're not like, oh, 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 shoot. And <laughs> you're ready. Uh, you yeah. have and it's also a disc that is also kind of nice, too. It's a thinner disc? and it's just like a circle. Yeah, I know what yeah. you're talking about. I see those ads on YouTube yeah, all the but time. They, those you can throw away, so they would be yeah. more more friendly. But they hold more. It's a little more. Um, State my curiosity. Is it like a cork? Like no, it would be like almost like, like a that, trampoline, that, <laughs> like a trampoline. Like it's a circle, and then you have like a little plastic, like a. It's like it, it pinches. 
Right. The outside rim pinches in when the middle would be almost like saran wrap in a sense, for lack of a better description. So when you put that in, so that way, if you want, you can also have um, intersects as well, because now you're not leading inside other places. All that stuff. So they kind of, their claim to fame is the non bloody way to, you know. How fun. But if people well. want to do it, it does help with cramps. It's yeah, awesome. either way. There's just, but that's what their thing is. Yeah. So they, it's called the flex yeah. ring. Flex yeah. ring. Okay. Yeah. We're not sponsored by them. <laughs> no. You no, no, see no, those no. ads a lot. But if you <laughs> want to, don't just see the <laughs> I'm sure AO would love any sponsorship from feminine hygiene products. <laughs> honestly, I'm still, I'm honestly, I'm still looking. So we're still pretty small, but I'd say give it some time. If we're projecting in terms of how podcasts work, I, just, the news has just dropped that the podcast business community is changing rapidly. Mm -hmm. I know that some companies are trying to buy out other companies, like say Spotify, mm -hmm. putting that mm -hmm. loop. Um, so it's starting to become more niche uh, or more exclusive for those mm -hmm. out there. Like for instance, Michelle Obama is going to have a podcast show from, but it's Spotify exclusive. It's not going to be anywhere else. Uh, yeah. So the idea is a sponsorship might change a little bit. I would like to hope mm -hmm. to get one by the end of this year because this is actually pretty important. But uh, yes. since, since we're coming around the two hour mark, uh, we're going to start go ahead and closing uh, yes. for our yes. things because I know that some of us have papers to do, <laughs> even though it's a holiday. <laughs> I take the it's it's a holiday. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Um, yeah. in grad school, applying for grad school, you can't. Yeah, no, there's no vacation. My vacation <laughs> yeah. will be Thanksgiving week, and then after my first semester, so. My oh. vacation will be in December when my yeah. semester is over, yeah. and then I'll be freaking out to see if UCLA, UCSD, or SDSU accepts me. So if anyone's on the admissions committee for public yeah. health, please accept me. My name is Louise Gary. <laughs> I'm sure you'll have to choose. I'm sure you'll be to having to choose which school you want to go to. But I would like to be accepted and have the choice. I don't yes. want to be rejected by all three. I no, like you're going to gonna get into all four, I bet. Oh, man. I'm sending good vibes. <laughs> TV. Yes. Thank you. Freaking waiting. Vibes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank Our you. Vibes. Thank you. So, for uh, who wants to start their closing soapboxes for this episode? Nicole. <sighs> I did it last time. Nicole. It's you. Okay. I, okay. I, ironically, I feel like I have no soapbox to get off or to get on. Um, I feel we covered a lot today. Um, the my biggest off. I can share my biggest aha moment was the fact that HIV is now where it is being taught in a, not a positive light, but a truthful light, is mm -hmm. that it's just a pill every day now. And it's, I, that makes me really happy to hear, not an oxymoron, if you will, but the fact that, and it just proves that with more time, more things are gonna change for, for the better. And mm -hmm. the truth will always prevail in the long run. Ooh. Yeah. And now I'll get off my box. <laughs> Ooh, sure. <laughs> Um, my thing, um, hey, let's get more LGBT people out there represented. Mm -hmm. Let's get more people who are disabled or differently abled out there. Um, let's break down the stigmas on HIV and STDs. Um, they're not dirty people. They're not unclean people. They're just people. Yeah. Like, let's do that and let's, you know, talk about sex. It's uncomfortable, but it happens. Unless you're asexual, you're probably going to have sex. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, you fair point. You make a fair point. And if you're confused on what asexuality is, maybe look up a few more of the letters in the LGBTQ mm -hmm. spectrum. Just throwing it out there for my mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, <laughs> like, let's, let's have those conversations. And let's make sure that we are having conversations about consent. Yes mm -hmm. means yes. No means no. Mm -hmm. Simply put, mm -hmm. it was sounding yes. And please understand, it is very important to be careful. If you feel like it's a no, just don't do it. And maybe not have sex while you're drinking. It's it's best if you don't. Yeah, just in the long that's run. That's don't do it. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. It's not going to be cute. You want it to be cute. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> If we're gonna put this off on a light note, just watch the first season of Glee. Just don't don't fall quit for Bray. We're just gonna put that out there. The actress Diana Agron, I love you. Uh, you did a phenomenal job with the the acting for Quinn for Bray. I feel like I need to get into Glee. 
honestly, it covers a lot of things that we <laughs> don't talk about, like the teen pregnancy, and obviously, like you said, yeah. the, the the various phrases that she said. But that's just me making it kind of light and funny before we hop off. On. Um, watch Sex Education and watch Special if you do have Netflix. Those are two really great shows. Um, and then of course, if not, you're probably gonna get your sex information from Big Mouth. That's my cell box. <laughs> No worries. No worries. I think, like you said, it's it's quite fair that, Nicole, you said that education changes and times have changed. We went from in the 80s and 90s where we did not know what HIV and AIDS meant. And then now it's like it's maybe not stigmatized as now, but there are more comfortable ways of expressing uh, ways that we can help them. Um, like mm-hmm. through, there are now drives for them out there. There are now more accessible means of how to treat the symptoms out there. There are ways to prevent uh, prevent uh, HIV contraction, right? And then obviously keeping your symptoms under control so it doesn't lead to blown out AIDS, mm-hmm. right? And then obviously, uh, at least like you said, we are now seeing a more progressive space in our democracy right now. We're seeing more uh, people of color we are now seeing more queer representation out there yeah. and it's beautiful and it's great. And as far as, and we know we touched a little lightly on those who are suffering physical disabilities or able-bodied disabilities. Uh, we do need more legislation out there because we are still not doing enough out there. As far as I know, yeah. I still feel like it's still very limited, but that's another topic we could talk about <laughs> for those people out there. And then, yeah. Uh, as far as education goes, like I said, if you could reach out to one person out there in your circle, whether it's a family, a friend, a teacher, educator, who could give you more knowledge that you're looking for, speak to that. And then the internet is a great way. Uh, I just urge caution because rabbit holes could lead to rabbit holes and you might find yourself looking at something that might be a little a little traumatizing. Just putting that out yeah. there. <laughs> and well, we're going to go ahead and close out. Nicole, thank you uh, for having No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I'm just going to close up this F on. So, oh, yeah, quick picture first before I finish this up. That the Who has the um, thing ready? That's me. That's me. All right. And a one, two, three. Oh, my clothes, my clothes. <laughs> oh, i got to cover my clothes. Love, 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 love being the no, picture. Um, All right. Uh, uh, We'll do this real quick uh, before we, we close out. Uh, always get a second opinion. If you can, make sure you be educated. Be kind and compassionate to those who are out there. And always, always do take care for this coming week. And I will see all your beautiful faces sometime soon, okay? All right, we'll go okay, ahead and close it bye here. Bye, everyone. Bye. In three, two, one. Blah.